Welcome to my channel. My name is Odetta George. Today we are going to share about how to start in the real estate with a little money. But before we proceed, I want to take this opportunity to thank the viewers whom, according to the YouTube studio, the statistics, the statistics are that the leading people who are watching this channel are from United States, followed by Uganda, then India, then Kenya, then uh, Brazil. But I also have channels where there are even people from Iraq watching. And I'm really surprised who are these people from Iraq expatriates or they are Iraqis. I want to send hi to everyone who is watching now. So let's rush to how to start with a little money in real estate. When I'm addressing this, please don't think about real estate in terms of a seven story or 30 story buildings. They will scare you. I want you to just calm down and look at real estate. Those ones as high end, because real estate we also have classes, we have high end, we also have middle class, we even have upper middle class, we also even have lower middle class, and we also have the ones who are on, on, on the, at the base of the pyramid. So for now, let's go to now how you can come to real estate. The first point of entry you can enter real estate is to you can be a service provider a carpenter you can set up a company that company providing service of carpentry electrician electrical installations perhaps plumbing interior design compound design etc now when you do that you will have started the journey and when you get to the sites be taking photos of those sites because like for our case here people don't have a problem with taking photos for the sites so long as you don't go and misuse the photos take for the exterior take for the compound the way it was designed you can take the the ones for the lounge the kitchen the the, the master bedroom you can even take photos for for the terrace for the gazebo all those have an album where you put those photos for different sites because people you will be called to different sites there will be bungalows there could be townhouses there could be mansions there could be double story buildings depending on your capacity sometimes you may even be called as a subcontract there is a contract somebody picked the contract but because he knows you are good in this he takes you as a subcontractor I would advise you to keep those photos in your album. Why? When you do the photos plus the contacts, when you do, very soon you will find that they, 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 they are, you are asked by some clients to recommend an electrician, to recommend a carpenter, I mean a, a, a plumber. And then you can recommend some of these people. You may even need to subcontract to, like if you're a carpenter, you may need to subcontract to another carpenter if you get a deal. Now, in that case, you will be building your revenue streams. You'll be building your revenue streams, but at the same time networking with the people in the value chain. Because you're already in the system, you've been networking with agents, you've been networking with landlords, you've been networking with the contractors, you've been networking with carpenters, with the people who are doing the tiling, you've been networking with electrical, uh, uh, people who do electrical installations, all those people. Very soon, when you build enough capital and you have put your plot, these are some of the people you will use. You will be having an idea how much they charge, uh, what formula they used to charge, and, and even who is good in what. 
because now all that information you will have got it here that's one way of entering real estate you come as a service provider so through these contracts you are do, you are having you you will raise your own you will get some money after some time you buy your plot and when you get money you can talk to these people any of these service providers to also go and construct the, a, a house whichever house you want at the same time you will have inter interfaced even with landlords who will be advising you which banks to go to and what rates they are offering when you're in the system you see when i was when i was a what sometimes i used to look for a job and they told me it is very easy to get a job when you're in the system as in when you have another job than when you are out of the job because employers will be asking you how come as good as you may be you don't have a job at the moment because when you don't have a job at that point you become rusty you become a bit rusty sometimes they they assume the momentum the momentum will have gone down sometimes the confidence will have gone down but when you are still having a job there is that perception that you are still more productive so it's the same here when you use that and when you come as a service provider you are you enter the system you will start interacting with other service providers agents landlords and the stakeholders in the value chain real estate that is one way another way if you can't come that way as a service provider you can choose a business because then you can come as an agent i mean be, number one you can come as just as a carpenter working for someone but there is another way where now you can even set up a business and i'll give you examples what people because i know a client who has done the same that client she set up a a mobile money agency and she asked me to get her a place which is on the main road the main road very strategic on the main road and she said the reason why i cannot afford that place because i have less capital so i cannot afford to be the main tenant instead i want to sublet from someone because i have less capital so i got her place that is strategic and she came as she came to subrent now when she reached there when she reached there this is the second way i told where you can do a business as a mobile money agency mobile money agency these are agents that are that are that are given that are delegated by banks to offer some services that are provided by the bank this banks delegate some of the services like withdraw like deposit to those people so she set up her business when she set up the business and the business started because the place was good and she was just subcontracting she was just subletting sorry she her business managed to grow well now when the business grew she was started interacting with bank managers remember this is a mobile money agency bank managers she even told me that what she did is her first the, the because of the turnover she would bank in a bank which was recommended to be very good on giving mortgages so after some time what this client did for example was to approach a bank and request that the bank uh, buys her a plot a building where she was subrenting where she was subrenting so she went and approached the, 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 the owner of the building and requested to, to find out whether 
person could consider selling. Then what happened is she went back to the bank and said, look, I have got a place. We have not negotiated well, but even if I lose this place, I'm going to make sure that I try and get a place next there. And because the bank had seen the turnover, because the bank had seen the turnover, the way things, the way the lady was banking in the bank, and she had networked with the bank managers, they advised her to secure the place. For her, she was fearing that because her business had uh, had a broken even and the business was doing well, somebody else may come and buy that building and then she will have to relocate. So the second way is that one. You start a business in a place. But I just, I just need to caution you that if you know you don't have much capital, when you are buying, endeavor to buy bungalows. There are structures that are in strategic places, but when they are bungalows, double storage could be expensive. And because you're a first timer, you may be worried about how much the bank would need you to be paying every month. So I would advise you to be going for bungalows, these single houses, but they which are touching the main road. Now, the third way to come into real estate with a little money for those who can afford this is you can if you can't even afford to set up a building in the in the city you can set up a, that building next to the tarmac road or at the very center of of the town that building you construct, you buy a plot, you construct, and you finish. Then, in practice, this is what people are doing. And it's done mostly by the hardwares and supermarkets. Now, what hardwares do, the moment the, the proprietors have built a building, they go to the bank. They go to the bank, and they say, look, for me, I have this building. I can give you space. Because I can give you space, you come and put your products here. When clients buy them, I pay you. So what, this, what they do in this building, they just provide space. It's done mostly by hardware and supermarket. So you will find they go to a bank that supplies, let's say, iron sheets. A bank that supplies cement. Not sorry, a, a, a manufacturing company that supplies paint. A manufacturing company that supplies iron sheets, steel. And all they provide them is space because they know they are in a strategic place. And then you, what you do, you come, you inspect, you do a, a, a site survey. Somebody from the company will come and be site survey. Then they find the building is in a strategic place and they give you space. You bring, you display your products there. After displaying, you have a choice even to bring a salesperson, perhaps. If you find that you are, you are product maybe like lotions, may need a lot of um, sensitization. Usually they put, they have ladies there who can speak to clients who come, let's say, at that counter for lotions. Then, whatever you sell, whatever you sell, you give the money back to, to, the, to the bank. I mean, not, not to the bank, to the manufacturing company. If it's for paint, if it's for steel, if it's for cement. Now, for supermarkets, they do the same. They give you the display. In fact, I remember when I was still a salesman, these ladies of the supermarket, they would just tell us, you know what, for you, me, what I've given you is space. And what you can do, 
you come and display your products there. If your products are not sold, we will be calling you three days before they expire to come and pick them and take them back. But as you come, whatever will have been sold is what we are going, is the money that you're going to pay you. So when they see business has picked, then they can tell you that you see, you'll be coming to pick a check maybe every 15th. Or you'll be coming to pick a check every 30th of the month. That's how it has been happening. And that is the, the third way. So when you do that, with the time you build your capital. When you build your capital, you can use that capital to go to the bank. And as, as you give to the bank as a deposit, and then the bank may give you money to enter into real estate. But even then, by virtue of you being, for example, having a hardware, and you have contacts with, with the paint companies that manufacture paint, you have contacts with companies that manufacture steel, you have contacts with companies that manufacture a, a, a cement, and so on and so forth. Those are enough to give you leverage when you want to construct, when you want to construct your own place. So that is the, the third one. Now, the fourth one is when you do air B and B. You can start in real estate with a little money by doing air B and B. And this is even done by agents, like in this town. There are so many agents doing it. And what are they doing? They are basically going to people who are building new apartments and saying, look, for me, I'll give you, I'll be paying you three months in advance for your apartment. And they know the apartment is new, is in a strategic place. They avoid picking apartments that are near, next to pork joints. They avoid picking apartments that are near noisy places because they are targeting mostly expat, I mean, expatriate families, or they are targeting holiday makers or vacation, people come on vacation. And what they do after that, they furnish, after growing the landlord or the landlady, they furnish. They will put the furniture, they will put the, 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 the fridge, they will put the, the washing machine, they will organize for Wi-Fi for their clients. And then they will be charging their clients. They start charging their clients per day. For example, there are some places where they are charging $30 per day, $50 per day. Even in some places, they are even charging $100 per day. And then they cover for some, they cover for some uh, utilities like water, like uh, electricity, like gas. For example, they cover for those utilities for you. Now, all that that is happening, when if you are going into that business, what you just need to you need to understand the clientele. For example, Americans just know that Americans love places where there is a garden. So they don't just go for any apartments. Americans love places where there is a garden. You also need to know that Americans don't like uh, houses where you have to put on a light. They want it when it has natural light. You need to know that. Yeah, then you need also to, to know about some, some other clans. For example, Norwegians. Norwegians, those are flexible. There are people who are in Europe but very flexible. From my experience, from the ones I've, I've dealt with, very flexible. Indians, you need also to know Indians. Indians, there are some Indians who cannot go into an apartment when the toilet, is it facing south or something like that? I've forgotten the, the very way. And when, when I ask about them, they say, yes, those are, they, those, it's not for all Indians. It is for some Indians from, for some Indians from the northern part of India. That's what, that's what they say. Then you, as you do all this also, you need to 
you need to know that you either you, you are the one who will be now the property manager. So whatever happens, the landlord will be looking up to you to maintain the cleanliness of the apartments you've been given and at the same time to, to, to deal with your tenants directly. All the landlord wants is her money or their rent, and that is all most of the time. And the people in practice, what they have been doing is that some of them, they even start cleaning companies using that address. So by starting an Airbnb, somebody may ask, why Airbnb? Why not just go for apartments and not Airbnb? Airbnb because you are charging in dollars. Most people here, they charge in dollars. So you are gaining more than the landlord who has given you the apartment. Sometimes you are gaining twice, sometimes three times, sometimes one and a half times, depending on, depending on the area. But before COVID, the, the market has been that most, they were gaining more during Christmas and during Easter. But now the market is distorted. The market is a bit distorted. The real estate market, like here, is a bit distorted. I want to thank you for having given me this opportunity to listen to me. Please, I request you to subscribe to this channel so that you can be able to bring you more videos. Thank you.